Hello and welcome to another edition of the Nerd Enterprises Incorporated webcast. Today, as usual, we have something very special planned for you. We put a lot of time and thought into this, a whole five minutes. No, I'm just kidding. But this is going to be, I think, uh, a good one, especially for those of you who own businesses, and especially if you have employees and you have to pay them payroll. A lot of businesses do that, and that tends to be the single largest expense that any business has is their payroll. So it becomes kind of a critical area to focus on and to understand. And one of the questions I frequently get asked is, you know, Seth, you get a lot of clients that come in, and the reason they come to you is because they've been to others, and they've had a mess made of their books, and now they need it cleaned up. And then, of course, once it's cleaned up, they want the proper monthly maintenance and make sure that things are kept clean going forward. And that's what we do. That's our specialty. So one of the answers I have to that is that it happens because the companies didn't do uh, what they should have done in the first place, which is to sit down and do the planning that I'm now going to do for them as we clean things up. And what that means in layman's terms is you've got to sit down and say, how much money am I bringing in? How much, what are my expenses going to be? What's the difference? Am I solvent? Am I bringing in more money than I'm putting out? That has to be in place. It might be that I know at first I'm going to put out more money than I take in because I'm building the business, and that's fine. But then it's that much more important for me to know if I have 100000 in the bank and I'm operating at a loss of $5,000 a month, well, then I've got about 20 months to start turning a profit. Otherwise, I run out of money. These are the kinds of things that we help companies analyze and do so we can make sure that you're profitable. And when it comes to payroll, what invariably happens is at some point, the day's going to come where you need to hire a new employee, and you're going to go out and you're going to do your homework, or you may already know what you have to pay that person in order to bring them in. You know what the fair salary is for that position in your industry and in the current economy and so on and so forth. Where a lot of businesses fall short at that point is then they go in place they hadn't hired the person. And never once did they stop and take a look, well, can we afford that? Can we afford that salary? You know, or the look that they give it is just very cursory. So I want to show you how you can create a very simple template in Excel that lets you analyze this. And you write the formulas in such a way that all you have to do is play around with the salary, play around with the assumptions, and see the calculations update instantly so you can see exactly what the impact is going to be on your cash flow. And of course, as always, it's a little oversimplified for the purposes of this webcast, but it's just to give you an idea. And you can go and recreate what I create in this webcast, or as always, you can email me. Anytime you see a template used, email me. I'm more than happy to send you the template. And that's what I want to do for you here, is I want to show you how this is done, how I do it. And of course, if you want to consult with me, I am more than happy to consult with you, and it's well worth your while to pay me two or $300 for the time it'll take for me to build a model based on your payroll, based on your business, which you can then use to analyze the situation anytime you want to bring in a new employee. And of course, we can take this even further. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put in, I've, lay, I've done a layout. I'm going to show you how to write the formulas. The layout is, it takes a few minutes and I don't have time because I have to keep this short. But I put in my $90,000 salary right here. I've set it up that that's something I'm going to want to be able to change. I'm going to want to try different salaries and see what the impact is. And then the additional cost, which a lot of people fail to take into consideration, is if I pay somebody a salary, now as an employer I have to pay taxes on that salary. I have to pay workers' comp and health insurance. So I need to factor these things in. And they're all based on a percentage of payroll. So for taxes, I'm going to put, uh, let's just call it 9.5%. And let's call workers' comp one and a half and health insurance two. Workers' comp is going to vary. So this is one you're going to want to research for your own company and find out what your workers' comp rate is. Because let's say, for example, you're in the construction business and you have bricks falling on people's heads. Then you want to make sure that you have the right rate in there because it can be substantial if you're, yours is a business where the employees are considered to be more at risk. If you have mostly clerical employees that are sitting around pushing paper, then one and a half percent is probably about right. So let's take the annual salary now. I type an equal sign. I'm in the June column. And I want to take the annual salary and divide it by 12. And that gives me a monthly salary of $7,500, gross salary. Now I want to copy this over to the right. I don't want to keep rewriting formulas, but there's a problem. It gives me zeros when I do that. And the reason why is Excel uses what's called relative referencing. So if I'm taking what's in the salary here in C4, and it's in that formula, and I'm copying it to the right. Well, when I go to the right, it's going to change that to D4, and then E4, and then F4, and so on. So I need to hold this C constant. And the way I do that in Excel is I type a dollar sign. And now I can successfully copy it across. 
and I can even come over here into 2010 and copy it there and I'm all set. The next part is a little trickier because I have two things I need held constant. The first thing is to write the initial formula. I'm taking the salary times the taxes. On the next line down, I want to take the salary, the same salary, so that's going to be held constant, row 4, times the workers' comp rate that I've put in. So that I, need, I need that row to update. I need row 6 to become row 7 when I copy it down. So again, I come in here, row 4 has to stay constant, so I put a dollar sign in there. And row C, or column C rather, also has to stay constant, because as I copy to the right, I need this rate to be what's being multiplied by and not anything after that. Now I can copy these across. And again, I can take my formulas and copy them right into 2010. And now I can see, looking at 2010, which is a whole year, I can look at my totals and see I've got my 90000 and the true annual cost of paying somebody 90000 based on these assumptions is going to be 101700 And notice I've given it some formatting to make it stand out, because that's what I, part of what I really want to see. The next thing to analyze now is, now I know it's going to cost me 8500 a month to have this employee on payroll. And now I would look, if I had it, at the bigger picture and look at my profit and loss projections and see, can I afford another 8500 a month in expenses? Or does that put me negative? And then there's also going to be the cash flow element. Because there's a profit and loss and then there's cash flow, which is something separate. But with this information in place, I can look at that and see, can I afford it? Now let's say this person I'm hiring is a salesperson. So they're going to go out and they're going to bring in business for me. Well, the idea is that they're going to bring in business directly. So what I could do now that I have this information, and let's say I've determined I cannot afford 90000 I cannot afford 8500 a month, what I can do is I can take this information and go to the salesperson and say, okay, normal salary, if I just put you on salary for your position is 90000 but here's what I'm willing to do. I'm willing to go half on the salary and make the rest performance based. I'll pay you commission, which is very typical for salespeople. Well, before I even get into that conversation with the salesperson, I need to know what do I want to pay this guy in commissions or this girl? Well, the first thing I would want to do is say, if this person is costing me 8500 a month, then I want to at least double that in what they bring in because this way that, that person gets paid their salary and I get paid actually an equal amount. And that's before I have any other expenses and things. But at least I know their payroll and taxes are covered times two. So I multiply this by two to get an idea of what do I want this person to bring in in sales in order to make it worth my while to have them work for me and to pay them to go out and bring in sales. Well, I get 16950 I would just call it 20000 to give it a nice even number and tell them, look, your sales quota is going to be 20000 Well, then I want to know, based on that, what do I want to pay in commission now? Because 20000 monthly is going to be... That times 12 is 240,000 a year, 240,000 a year. Well, now let's cut the payroll in half to 45,000. And I want to see, I want to get his commission or her commission structure to translate dollar-wise. If they're doing the 20,000, I want to pay them commissions of 45,000. So 45,000 is my target. That divided by the whole 240, assuming that's what they're doing at 20,000 a month, I can I, I do the division, just 45,000 divided by 240, format it as a percentage, and to be fair, I rounded up their monthly quota, let's just round up their commission now and just call it 20%, and I know pretty conservatively that that's going to work. So 20% is the commission rate I want to offer them. So now I have information. I have I know what my cash flow is. I know if I can afford 4200 a month. And I know based on this quick analysis that I did in less than 10 minutes that I would want to pay this person a commission of 20% of their sales. Because now if they're doing 240000 in sales, we can back that out. Let's take the 240 times the 20%. Format that for dollars. is 48000 And I'm paying them a base of 45 it's, it's going to come out a little higher, which is fine. Because again, this is, any, and then anything they do over that is, is just extra. It's extra for them, it's extra for us as the employer. So this is the power in doing that kind of thing, because now I know I go into every situation, having done the right planning, I know what I can afford. The only thing that's going to stop me now, of course, is if I don't get the sales that I need. But again, if I'm hiring a salesperson, that's what they're there for, and having had this information, I now have a quota. They have to do 20000 a month. And if for, you structure that in your employment agreement, if for three months they don't do 20000 a month, then I know I've got to let them go. 
and then I've got to try and find another salesperson. So it's performance based. Now if it's not a salesperson, then it's still important information because I don't want to hire that person unless I know that having that person on my payroll is going to in some way, shape, or form help me bring in the extra money or otherwise become more profitable so that the increase in profits can sustain their payroll, the additional cost I have to take on. That's why it's so important to do this. Businesses that stay in business do this kind of planning. That's why I've been able to succeed with my business. It's not because I'm so smart. It's because I've taken the time to do the right planning and to make sure that I don't get into anything that I can afford. I've seen lots of bookkeeping services struggle and fail because they went into it and put people on payroll and they didn't have the business to support the payroll and they couldn't afford it and they went out of business or they had to get rid of all their bookkeepers and go back to bare bones. So it's really important to do this kind of planning and analysis. I hope you enjoyed this and we hope to see you around on the web. Visit our new QuickBooks blog. It's www.theqbw.com. Ask all your QuickBooks questions there. I'm going to be posting up today's question in just a few minutes. Theqbw.com. Have a great week.